Hey, there, Bruce there, an episode of Chord Play, and it's the chords of Halloween. And I have to admit that I had a lot of requests leading up to October for the band Halloween. And I was completely caught off guard and kind of confused and shocked. And I definitely remembered, you know, Halloween popping up on Headbangers Ball back when I was a teenager. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those bands I never really visited, you know, as far as their albums or dug into their music. I just remembered them. And then when I saw, you know, Facebook and YouTube both lit up, I think I had a dozen requests in one day. That was back like in the end of September. But I announced or kind of reminded everybody that October was Metal Month. And that day, you know, my Facebook just lit up like a Christmas tree. It was Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. I think I had eight requests in like a half an hour. And I'm sure there's packs of people out there that don't even realize there's a band called Halloween, but Halloween formed in Hamburg, Germany in 1984 and kind of helped pioneer what became known as power metal, which power metal kind of has more ties with progressive metal than say, you know, thrash or speed metal or death metal or something like that. Power metal is usually more uplifting and kind of major keys and this kind of powerful, you know, almost, uh, I don't really know how to describe it. I kind of view it almost like Prague, but it's not quite progressive metal. It's not quite as busy or crazy as like Dream Theater or somebody like that. But power metal is definitely a style or, you know, subgenre of metal. And it's just interesting to notice, you know, this kind of push, you know, bands like Halloween, definitely Queensryche and, you know, some of those groups, uh, Blind Guardian and some of those bands. And there's a big push of this kind of melodic, powerful, you know, hard rock and metal definitely in the, you know, early to mid 80s. And Halloween's had, what, 15 albums, or, you know, 15 studio albums. They've had, like, three live albums, three EPs. They've definitely been on the scene for a while. And it wasn't until I had the request for this lesson, I just dove into their music and started listening to it. And I didn't really realize they had that many albums. I thought, wow, you know, I definitely uh, want to thank everybody for kind of steering me in this direction because I've had a blast getting this lesson together. With the opening, that was the song Halloween from the uh, Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 1 album. And that seems very appropriate since uh, this is technically, you know, the Halloween lesson. But it opens with this really sinister, you know, scary sound. And this is going to be basically an E major 7 sus 4 over A. And the reason I'm identifying that as an E chord is because the intro is prominently an E. You've got this big scary, you know, monster kind of power chord, you know, riff that follows that. So that's technically over E and not over A. But you got that really weird sound. And then during the power chord riff, it actually moves up a whole step. So that'd be an F sharp 7 sus 4 over B. So I guess you could think of that as guitar 1, you know, kind of a cleaner guitar part, but that real creepy, you know, horror movie like soundtrack right there. And then after that, uh, the second guitar comes in with these big power chords. So there's nothing really, you know, surprising. Uh, there are some stacked power chords, which are always cool. And then these kind of fanned out, you know, uh, spacious, you know, power chords like that. But you've got, you know, just the big E and then B to B flat, which is targeting the flat five. <laughs> kind of lazy mosh, you know, down uh, to the low E again. And right there, you're basically playing an E flat, or I guess you could think of that as a D sharp five over A sharp. That would kind of signal a uh, harmonic minor, if we were thinking of E minor, and then you've got that D sharp that kind of creeps in there. But I'm not really sure if that's what they were thinking, but it's in there. And, um, you know, this D sharp, and that's going to move up basically to this F sharp over C sharp right there. And I'm definitely a fan of those, you know, kind of big stack chords. They sound different than the smaller versions, you know, up here. You know, we got a little more, you know, kind of high end sizzle with the higher note. kind of missing that down here. So you really just have this big brooding, you know, power chord riff. And uh, they actually start kind of 
fleshing it out a little bit more and they start stacking that B and B flat power chord. <laughs> or like Godzilla or something like that. But a cool riff and very, very heavy. And scary too. comes from the song Phantoms of Death from the Walls of Jericho album and it loosely reminds me of Looks That Kill uh, from Motley Crue just a little bit but it's something like this <laughs> you can see we're playing these higher you know power chords think of bark at the moon and some of those songs and uh, it's basically you know it's revealing a little secret or kind of a you know a secret chord that Halloween seems to like because they use it in some of their songs and there we've got an A5 they're just pounding that chord and that's the part that reminds me of looks that kill just a little bit even though looks looks that kills technically tuned down a whole step and it's just that chord they're not really adding you know mix not really playing that high a up there but for this you know they're grabbing that and then move down to a g5 and then right there it's going to move back to this and that's kind of unusual this is the secret halloween chord that's going to be a d over f sharp but it's not really that common to see that and you can see that up here, you know, the same chord, but just, you know, arranged in a different way. And think of the old, you know, the classic, you know, D over F sharp down here, either, you know, wrapped with your thumb or, you know, play down an open position. You know, there's a lot of acoustic songs, you know, that have that chord in it. Same chord, just, you know, a different voicing. But right there, you can see we've got this little kind of shift. <laughs> time just kind of walk down that little scale run right there and there's actually a harmony guitar um, that's kind of harmonizing with that it's really just an octave you know, so there's guitar one and guitar two and they both kind of just you know jump on that riff The next example comes from the song Pleasure Drone, which is from Keeper of the Seven Keys, The Legacy, and this is tuned down a half step. And I honestly was not familiar with that album whatsoever until I started getting this lesson together on the material and doing some of the research and, you know, listening. And I'm definitely going to go back and visit that album because this, you know, this song and that album rock, but it's something like this. <laughs> rocking out too it kind of reminds me of Dokken and it almost sounds like Don Dokken a little bit as far as the vocalist I think they have a different vocalist on that album but we're just pummeling you know this E5 there's a G5 and then there's that D over F sharp again just like we saw in the previous example so that definitely pops up in Halloween's music and that's really crafty too I've never really you know really never really noticed that shift of that little twist with those chords but I'm gonna start playing with that it's cool but you're hitting the E, and then G, and then the D 
D over F sharp. And then right there, they start doing this. So that's gonna function in a couple different ways. There's a C5 sharp 11 for that first chord. And then just reverts back to like a C over G right there. But that's cool, I like that too. scale run at the end and it leads into the verse right there but that's a rocking song okay, the next example comes from the song forever in one neverland which is also from the time of the oath uh, album and i have to admit i would never really heard this song before and it's beautiful it's like this very um just kind of moody like power ballad or whatever i'd never heard it and when i tuned into it and started listening to it i thought wow how have i never heard this song and there's some really cool, you know, chord ideas happening here too. Something like this. Too. So it starts with this, and there's actually a piano intro, and then the guitar comes in with this. So that is going to function as A minor right there. You know, really interesting voicing too, I like that. And then he just, you know, hit the 12th fret harmonic right there on the G, the B, and the high E. Which that's technically signaling, you know, E minor, but it's a harmonic. that A minor again and then it moves to E minor but this is really crafty so there's you know the low E G and B and then they extend that pinky up to grab those harmonics right there too and I love chords that incorporate you know harmonics you know one open string two fretted notes and three harmonics right there all six strings this is a D minor, uh, D minor add nine. You know, kind of opening up that high E string. And then you just loop that cycle of chords there for the beginning. song too and I love those chords and the ideas floating around there. The next example comes from the song The Time of the Oath and it comes from the album by the same name and this is tuned down a half step and then drop D and it's something like this. <laughs> starts with that open string kind of uh, you know the low E open with that octave uh, D right there you know, cool groove kind of set up there and then the last time through that it's like this weird little wicked riff right there twister and then just hit you know the open string D power chord right there and then this is really interesting because they're fretting this but they're pummeling and hitting that low E that's tuned to D so those are going to function as D chords or you know part of the D uh, you know mutation which is really cool so that's going to be a D sus 2 technically and then move that
that up a half step and that's going to function as D minor sharp 5. And then move that up again to the 10th fret and that's going to be a D7 sus 4. So they start weaving those three chords, you know, against that low uh, D open, you know, the low E string that is tuned to D. song too. The last example is from Keeper of the Seven Keys and this is from Keeper of the Seven Keys part two and you can see I'm on acoustic guitar and we're also in standard tuning and this guitar part you know is very kind of recognizable it might hit your ear you know in a familiar way because you can hear lots of acoustic guitar you know in minor keys with this descending kind of bass line think of uh, Led Zeppelin you know babe I'm gonna leave you and the Beatles while my guitar gently weeps and sticks you know Sweet Madam Blue and some of those songs and this kind of fits in with some of those, you know, very popular songs, but something like this. change up or walk up in there but it starts with this A minor and you're actually just starting with uh, and then it's A minor over G just kind of picking through it and then a D7 sus2 over F sharp so those chords once again A minor A minor over G D7 sus2 over F sharp and you can see your pinky's gonna grab that G and then your middle finger literally just kind of moves over to the low E string to grab that F sharp. And then you've got this busy little chromatic uh, walk up, which is really interesting. And then I like how it starts the beginning of that phrase again. second time through, you're going to play A minor over C right there. And then follow that with the D7 sus2 over F sharp, which sounds really cool. You know, to hear those two chords kind of move you know, back and forth. And then you just loop that pattern. Um, episode of chord play with the chords of halloween and i do want to thank everybody for the you know the views and the likes and the shares and the support and the patreon supporters facebook support youtube you know comments and, and requests because a lot of the lessons that i made this month you know for metal month came from your requests you know some of them may have been months ago but i do have a notebook where i'm kind of keeping you know keeping notes and kind of jotting things down and if i just have an idea that pops in my head or if I notice some requests or some messages and I start writing, you know, some things down. So I am trying to keep track of, you know, what I've covered and what's being asked or requested. And uh, I'm kind of random, you know. So when I saw just the outpour of Halloween requests, I thought, okay, well, I'm obviously, you know, I was going to do like maybe one song and I was going to have a, like a Halloween kind of grab bag, you know, of like metal and stuff. And I already had the band kind of in mind. But when I posted that image on Facebook, I think it was, like I said, you know, the end of September, it was crazy. I just thought, you know, I had no idea that there were, you know, all these people just waiting for me to do some Halloween, which is really cool. So thank you for steering me this way, because now I've got, you know, some albums and a band that I'm not really that familiar with to listen to, which, you know, hopefully I'm inspiring and kind of helping some people out there, you know, shake things up in their practice habits, but definitely the requests that are poured in have shaped up, you know, my practice habits, which is great, you know, uh, that's a, a bonus or, a, you know, a, 
benefit from doing this too, where it's like, you're kind of directing me in places I may not naturally go. It was just, you know, left up to me, but having requests like this, you know, Halloween, you know, I dove into it and really had a good time, you know, kind of listening and absorbing some of their music. Well, have a happy Halloween and please subscribe to Late Night Lessons and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.